Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about angles as the first step towards talking about trigonometry. Um, so first off, in a ray, when we're talking about a ray, we are talking about a portion of a line. A line is something that continues in both directions forever, whereas a line segment is something that has a fixed beginning and fixed end. And then sort of the in-between would be a ray, which has a point that it begins at, and then it continues forever in one direction. So a ray would be something along the lines of this. And we're going to use a ray as an idea for describing what we mean by an angle. We begin with some point, which we're going to call a vertex, and then have two rays extending from that point. The first one, we'll call that the initial side, that's where the angle begins, and the second ray, we'll call that the terminal side, that's where the angle ends. And to indicate which one is the beginning and which one is the end, we show the angle, the direction of travel, with a little arrow. So here I've got two rays where the initial ray or the initial side is here, and the terminal ray, or the terminal side, is here. And you can see the, the direction of travel. I have a little arrowhead on there to show that we're traveling from the initial side to the terminal side. And so that is my angle theta. Uh, typically we use Greek letters for angle measurements, but it doesn't have to be. Um, but I'll be using Greek letters quite often, so you'll, you'll hear thetas coming up quite a bit here among other Greek letters. And of course, you could also, with the same two terminal, uh, same two rays, the initial side and terminal side, travel not in a counterclockwise direction, you could travel in perhaps a clockwise direction, traveling from the initial side to the terminal side. Uh, when we are talking about angles that are traveling in a counterclockwise direction, like this one, theta, we're talking about an angle whose measurement would be positive. When we're talking about angles that are traveled in a clockwise direction, like this one here, angle alpha, that would be an angle that has a negative measurement. That's something that's maybe slightly different than what you're used to. For many people, they've only seen angles inside of two-dimensional shapes. So the angle, for example, inside of a triangle. But here we're going to be talking about angles more generally, which means a lot of things that might be true for angles inside of shapes are not necessarily true for the angles that are just in general, and measurement between two rays, an initial side and a terminal side. Now, typically, we don't have our angles just sort of floating off in space like these two are. Normally, we'll draw our angles in standard form, uh, or standard position, rather. And when we put an angle in standard position, we're putting it on the x and y plane with the vertex here at the origin and with the initial side being on the positive side of the x-axis. So when I talk about an angle in standard position, this is the sort of thing that I'm talking about, where we have our angle drawn on the x and y plane, vertex at the origin, and that initial side is the positive x-axis. And then depending on where the terminal side is, we can talk about what quadrant the angle is in. So when you hear someone saying the angle happens to be in quadrant one, what they're saying is that the terminal side happens to be in quadrant one. Or if you're thinking about an angle that's in quadrant four, that would be something where the terminal side is in quadrant four. And it, notice that it doesn't matter whether we're talking about an angle that's being measured in a positive direction or in a negative direction. In both cases, the terminal side is in quadrant four, so you would call that an angle in quadrant four. So there are two different ways that we'll typically measure angles in. Um, for this class, we'll be using degrees often enough, but we'll also be introducing another way of measuring our angles. 
so the degrees we hopefully will know that fairly well that if we're talking about something that's a full circle so something where we do one full revolution that would be something that is 360 degrees and so if we're talking about something then that's a straight line so for example two rays that make a straight line the angle there would be half of a full circle or in other words a 180 degrees and if we've got a nice right angle that would be if we take this straight line that we have and cut it in half so we have something along the lines of this a nice 90 degree angle or a right angle uh, when we're doing geometry, typically we'll show that something is a right angle by drawing a little square. So to show, for example, that this triangle has a right angle, I would draw a little square in the corner to indicate that that angle happens to be a 90 degree angle or a, a right angle. So there's another way that we can define our angles because for this one, the one that we had before with, with degrees, that makes a lot of sense if we're thinking about defining things in terms of angles inside of shapes. That's, that's typically where we think about talking about degrees. But if we're thinking about our angles as drawn in standard position, drawn on the X and Y plane, then it makes maybe more sense to think about things in terms of this definition. Um, and there's a couple of advantages to this definition for angles, the radian definition. So when we're talking about a radian, what is a radian? It's making an equivalence between the angle that we're measuring and the distance around the outside of that circle. So here we're imagining that we've got some sort of an angle and this angle is being drawn in standard position and I've got a circle that is a unit circle. So unit circle that's a circle with radius of one and so this angle theta that we're measuring here that angle measurement of theta radians is the same thing as this length, the length of this arc. So when we're talking about what is one radian, if you wanted to know what one radian was, you would have to take a unit circle and find for yourself how much of the circumference measures one unit and however much that is, the angle that's made by that, that would measure one radian. So some kind of obvious things that come out of this, of course, is that if you're thinking about this unit circle that we're talking about, whose radius is one, and if you wanted to talk about a full circle, a full circle, the angle measurement that you would have for that should be the same thing as the circumference of the entire circle. Because remember, that's what a radian is. A radian is a measurement of that arc length that corresponds with that particular angle. So if the angle is one full circle, then the radian measurement of that angle would be the arc length of that full circle. In other words, that circumference of that full circle. And so that's where we get these ideas here. We know that if you've got a unit circle, if you have a circle with radius one, you know that the circumference would be two pi. So if we're talking about a unit circle, and we wanted to talk about one full revolution, that the angle measurement should be the same as that circumference, which is 2 pi. So that means if you're thinking in terms of radians, one full circle or one full revolution is 2 pi radians.
and that means that half of a circle should be half of that. That should be pi radians, which means that this angle would be pi radians, and that a quarter of a circle should measure half of that, pi over 2, for its arc length, which means that the angle should measure pi over 2 radians. So the big conclusion here, of course, is that if we're talking about 2 pi radians, that that is equivalent to 360 degrees, and that if you had pi radians, that that would be equivalent to 180 degrees, and so on. Now, typically when we're writing angles, for radians, we normally don't write the word radian after. You certainly can. Uh, but normally when we're talking about an angle, if you see a degree sign like we have here, then clearly that's an angle being measured in degrees. But if you don't see a degree sign, even if there's no pi lying around, then that would be an angle that's being measured in radians. So, for example, if I were to draw an angle in a triangle and indicate that as 37 degrees, well then clearly I'm measuring my angle in terms of degrees. If I didn't have the degree symbol there, if it was some other number, if it was 1.72, that would no longer be degrees, that would be something in terms of radians then, that would be 1.72 radians. Now, one thing that's going to be a little bit of a challenge at first is getting used to thinking about things in terms of radians. And so what you might find more comfortable um, when I say something about, oh, I'm thinking of an angle that measures pi over 3 radians, you might need to think about, well, what does that actually mean in terms of degrees first? So something that we'll probably need to do is to go back and forth between degrees and radians. Now, it's easy enough, of course, to do if, since we know that equivalence. We know that every pi radians is worth 180 degrees. So if you wanted to convert from degrees to radians, you just need to multiply by pi over 180. And if you need to convert from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. Uh, one thing just to keep in mind here, that the pi that we're talking about, that's the same pi that we knew from back in the day, that 3.1415 and so on, the same pi that got used in your geometry classes back in high school, that is exactly the same pi that we're looking at here. Uh, this also means that when we're converting something to radians or expressing something in radians, that there might be two different ways to express it, an exact way and an approximate way. So for example, 90 degrees, we know that 90 degrees is, uh, in terms of radians, pi over 2. And so if you were to express what is the 90 degrees in radians exactly, it would be pi over 2 radians. And that's the exact value. But if you ran to your calculator and churned out what is pi divided by 2, and you got 1.57079 and so on, that would be approximate. Because, of course, that would be something where I've had to round off. Because, of course, pi has infinitely many decimal places, and so that means that uh, any time that I'm doing anything involving pi, I will have to round things off if I want to turn it into a decimal, which means that that would be an approximate answer. Now, of course, like I always say, typically I am not interested in having us find out what the approximate value is. I want to know what is the exact value. So if I say, what is 90 degrees in terms of radians, this would be the answer that I'm looking for, the pi over 2 radians, not the decimal answer of 1.57. Okay, so let's start with this first one. Um, which is converting 215 degrees into radians. So 215 degrees into radians, I will just need to multiply that by pi over 180. And that's easy enough to do, so that's 215 pi over 180. And if you were using your calculator, this fractional part, 215 over 180, 
using the fraction function on your calculator, you can find that that is equivalent to the fraction 43 over 36. So this is really the same thing as 43 pi over 36. If in your calculator you enter 215 fraction function 180 and hit equals, it will give you as a mixed number that fraction over 36 and then second function fraction button again to get 43 over 36. So this would be the exact value for what is that angle in terms of radians. No need to actually calculate what is that putting in 3.14 in for pi. We're not interested in doing that. I want to keep my answer exact. So that would be where I end with that. And of course the reverse, we've got 7 pi over 36 in radians and we want to convert that to degrees. And so for that, I just need to multiply by 180 over pi. And here the pi's cancel out nicely, which means that I've got 1260 over 36. And if you put that into your calculator, 1260 over 36 as a fraction, that is equivalent to 35. So the answer here is that 35 degrees is our final result. So 7 pi over 36 radians is equivalent to 35 degrees. One little, uh, little add-on here, which is not super important, but it's a nice little uh, consequence of defining things in terms of radians, we actually wind up getting some fairly nice formulas for things like the length of an arc for a sector or the area of a sector. So when we're talking about that, we're talking about some circle that happens to have a, a radius r, and when we're talking about some angle theta, the arc length that we're talking about, that would be this distance. For that little slice of the circle, what would be that distance? That would be my arc length. And as it turns out, the formula for your arc length is just your radius multiplied by that angle. Um, now, of course, for this formula, the angle is being measured in terms of radians. There are equivalent formulas where things are in terms of degrees, just the formulas are a little less nice looking. So in terms of radians, you've got an angle and you know the radius and then just multiply the two together and that gives you your arc length. And that sort of makes sense too because if you're thinking about the fact that if you had a, a circle and wanted to know the full circumference, that would be a sector where the angle is 2 pi. And you know that then the circumference would be radius times the angle or 2 pi times the radius, which is our old friend the circumference formula coming back again. And when I talk about the area of a sector, same sort of a thing, we've got a circle with radius r, and we've got our angle theta, and when we're talking about the area of our sector, that's just the area of this little slice of the pi that we have here, and that area formula is just half times the radius squared times theta. And you can also show that if you were talking about a full circle, where the angle would be 2 pi, you get the familiar formula for area of a full circle, pi times r squared, which is kind of fun. Okay, so let's use these formulas. We've got a sector in a circle where the radius is 3 centimeters, and we know the angle for that sector is 30 degrees. And we want to know the arc length for the sector and the area for the sector. Now, before we use either of the two formulas, reminder that, of course, for this formulas that, for these formulas that we have, the angle theta has to be measured in terms of radians. And here, we don't have an angle measured in terms of radians. The angle is being measured in degrees. So first thing that we'll need to do is go from degrees to radians. And so for 30 degrees, to turn that into radians, we'll multiply by pi over 180. And that simplifies to give me pi over 6.
just as an aside here, um, there are some fairly common angles that after a while you'll get used to seeing them in their radian uh, format. So for example, um, the degrees of 30, 45, 60, 90, you'll see those often enough that after a while when you see pi over 6, you'll think of 30 degrees. You won't actually have to convert back and forth mechanically to try to figure out what that is. So right now you might have to do this work on the side, but after a while, um, give this a few more weeks, come back to this video, and, and if you re-watch this problem, you'll see angle of 30 degrees, you'll probably immediately be thinking, oh yes, the angle is pi over 6 radians. Okay, so we've got our angle, we've also got our radius, the radius is 3 centimeters, so r is equal to 3, so theta is pi over 6, and r is equal to 3, and so that means that if we want to calculate now both the circumference and, uh, not the circumference, rather the arc length and the area, they're both easy enough to do. So for the arc length, that was just theta times r, which is pi over 6 times 3, which is pi over 2. And of course, units would be centimeters. So the arc length is pi over 2 centimeters. I'm leaving it as pi over 2, not turning this into a decimal, because notice in the question, at no point did I say round your answer off to however many decimal places, and so if I'm not telling you to round things off, then I don't want an approximate answer. I want an exact answer. And so here, although it might feel weird to leave your answer as pi over 2, that would be the exact answer for this question. Okay, so now the area, that's our next one, the area is half times r times theta squared. Nope, that's not correct. r squared times theta, that's better. There we go. Half times r squared times theta, and now again just needing to put in what I have, I've got radius was 3, and the angle was pi over 6, and that turns out to be 9 pi over 12, which is the same thing as 3 pi over 4. And so units for this would be centimeters squared. So the area of the sector is 3 pi over 4 centimeters squared. There we go. Lovely. So, just a nice little application of the angles being measured in radians. It's not something that's super important, and it probably won't come back up that often, but nice to have seen it. Now, this is something, coterminal angles, is something that we are going to make a big use of later on, um, towards the end of Chapter 7 and throughout the rest of the course. Because one thing you might have noticed at the very beginning of this is that if you're thinking about an angle that's being measured in standard position, so you've got your initial side and your terminal side, you could be measuring your angle as a positive angle. You could also measure that angle as a negative angle. But there's also no restriction that you have to just go from beginning to end in one small move. You could maybe do a full circle and then make your way. And that would also be exactly the same angle or equivalent to that original angle. That for the same two arms, the same two sides, initial side and terminal side, there's actually infinitely many different angles that correspond with it. So, for example, I could travel clockwise, go around twice, and then end. And that might be my angle. So, we have a bunch of angles that are, in a sense, equivalent to each other, and equivalent that they, in the sense that they all have the same terminal side. Those would all be angles, the ones that I've drawn here, would all be angles that we would call coterminal. And the one thing to note about these is that these all differ from each other by one or more full circles. So if you're thinking about 
the angle where I go around the circle exactly once or going around the full circle twice before ending or three times or four times the only difference between those angles are that I have one or more full circles before I make my way to the terminal side or the same thing in the reverse doing one full circle and then ending up at the terminal side or two full circles and ending up at the terminal side and so on so if you're looking for angles that are coterminal, the idea is that they will differ by one full circle. So something like 100 degrees and 460 degrees, those are coterminal angles because 100 degrees and 460 differ by one full circle. 100 degrees and 360 plus 100, which is 460 degrees, they both would end at the same terminal arm. And they would end at the same terminal arm because these angles differ by one full circle. So if you're looking here, for example, for an angle which is coterminal to 810, you could do so by adding or subtracting full circles. So in this case, since it's degrees, we would be either adding or subtracting multiples of 360 degrees. If you've got 810 degrees, that would be coterminal to 450 degrees because those two angles differ by one full circle. And 450 degrees, if you were to take off another full circle, that that would be coterminal to 90 degrees. So what we've basically discovered here is that 90 degrees, 450, 810, that those would all end up at the same terminal side. So 90 degrees versus 450 degrees versus 810 degrees. They all start at the same initial side and all end at the same terminal side. The only difference is, is that for 450 and for 810, we've got a few extra full circles thrown in. So, and there's our answer to the question. 90 degrees, that's our angle that we were looking for, the angle between 0 and 360, which is coterminal to 810. Now, of course, if your angle is being measured in radians, then instead of adding or subtracting multiples of 360 degrees, you're going to need to add and subtract multiples of 2 pi, because, of course, 360 degrees and 2 pi radians, that those are equivalent to each other. Now, we're talking about an angle that is 27 pi over 10. So a full circle, 2 pi, that's equivalent to, if we were thinking about it being over 10, that's equivalent to 20 pi over 10. So when I'm adding or subtracting my full circles, adding or subtracting multiples of 2 pi, that's the same thing as adding and subtracting multiples of 20 pi over 10. And I'm using 20 pi over 10 because since my angle is 27 pi over 10, subtracting or adding 20 pi over 10 would be an easier thing to do. So let's take our angle of 27 pi over 10 and we'll subtract one full circle, which is 2 pi or equivalent to 20 pi over 10. And that leaves me with 7 pi over 10, or 7 tenths pi, which definitely is between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi is the same thing as 20 pi over 7, and what we've got is definitely less than 20 pi over 7. So we are definitely between 0 and 2 pi. So 7 pi over 10, that is an angle which is coterminal to 27 pi over 10, and it is between 0 and 2 pi. Now, of course, if you've got a negative angle like we have here, then instead of subtracting a full circle, you would add a full circle. So negative 470 degrees, if you were to go one full circle forward, that would bring you to negative 110 degrees. And if you were to go forward another full circle after that, 
that would bring you to 250 degrees. So what is the angle between 0 and 360 that's coterminal to negative 470? Well, it is 250 degrees. And so, as I said, this is something that we will be doing quite a bit of towards the end of Chapter 4, where if we're interested in some angle that's not between 0 and 360, or between 0 and 2 pi, we'll find the equivalent coterminal angle that's between 0 and 360, or 0 and 2 pi, to do our work with instead. So this, what we've done here, is going to be, in the future, the first step among many, where we'll need to take our given angle and find what is the coterminal angle between 0 and 360.